Hello everyone and welcome back to Auto Decode. Today we will be learning about automotive brakes. Almost everybody has been there where brakes have saved your life. Brakes have been inevitable ever since there has been a need for speed. So today let us understand how brakes manage to pull this off. All types of automotive brakes work on a single master principle and that is friction. Friction is a wonderful phenomenon and the reason for majority things happening around you. Like you can hold a bottle for drinking water or you can wear specs on your nose and ears and also the reason why you can walk. So what is friction? Let us understand. Friction is the force between two surfaces in contact which resists the relative motion between both of them. So whenever two surfaces moving relative to each other come in contact, the frictional force between these two surfaces tends to stop the relative motion between them. And that's exactly how automotive brakes work. So when the driver presses the brake pedal, the stationary brake pads are made to come in contact or rub against a surface that is rigidly attached to the wheel. For example, if it is a drum brake, then it is a drum attached to the wheel or if it is a disc brake, then a disc attached to the wheel. So due to the friction between the brake pads and this surface attached to the wheel, the kinetic energy of the vehicle is converted into heat energy, which eventually slows down the vehicle and stops it. That's the basic principle behind the working of all automotive braking systems. To make it simple for you, I'll be dividing the whole braking system into three main parts. The first main part will be the method of applying force at the driver end. That means how the driver applies the brakes. The second main part will be the method of transmitting this force from driver end to the wheel end. And the third main part will be the method of applying this force at the wheel end. That is how ultimately the braking force gets applied on the wheels to decelerate them. Let us start with understanding the first main part that is the method of application of force by the driver. So as we all know, the driver uses a brake pedal to apply the braking force. Long ago, there also used to be some hand operated levers, but nowadays those are totally obsolete. So we will not be discussing about them. So why do we need the brake pedal? The braking force which a vehicle requires to stop is very high and a human cannot apply that high force with bare hands or feet. That's why we require this multiplication of force after a human applies it. So brake pedal is a simple lever which in first place multiplies this force and sends it ahead. The second main part is the method of transmitting this driver applied force to the wheels. We ultimately need to stop the wheels and hence apply the braking force on the wheels. So we need to transmit this force through some medium from the driver end to the wheel end. This can be done in multiple ways. Earlier cables were used for this purpose. Like you can see in your bicycles, cables are used to apply the brakes. But nowadays cables are not used. Cables have a lot of disadvantages like the force is not evenly distributed to all four wheels if cables are used. Another disadvantage would be cables do not take very high braking forces which are nowadays required due to high speed and heavier vehicles. And also cables are not that reliable and snap off very easily. Instead of cables, there are multiple ways that can be used in a conventional passenger car. So air brakes are basically used in very heavy commercial vehicles and sometimes trains or locomotives. We won't be discussing about air brakes right now. I'll be making a separate video for that. So the main, the most common way of transmitting this force is the hydraulic brakes. Hydraulic brakes basically mean there is a fluid hydraulic oil or braking oil which is used to transmit this force applied by the driver to the wheels. So basically hydraulic brakes have overcome all the disadvantages that cables used to have. Hydraulic brakes distribute the pressure or force evenly to all the wheels. Hydraulic brakes can take very high forces and also hydraulic brakes can multiply a small force given by the driver to very large force which will be applied on the wheels. How do hydraulic brakes manage to pull this off? Let us understand. So hydraulic brakes work on the principle of Pascal's law. What does this law state? Let us understand. So consider a container, closed container with a fluid inside it. The blue thing is the container and green is the fluid inside it. So the law states that if pressure P is applied on a fluid in a closed container, then this fluid will exert exact same pressure P on all the walls of the container in all directions. So this container will experience same pressure P due to the fluid. This law is traced in automotive braking systems and how it is used? Let us see. So this is a system, a hydraulic system that I have shown here. Firstly, before that, 
this law is possible due to the incompressibility of the fluid ideally a fluid is totally incompressible and hence this is possible so let us understand it now so this system consists of a blue container this hole is a blue container it has two pistons a1 and a2 so a1 and a2 are the area of two pistons a1 is the smaller pistons with a smaller area and a2 is a larger piston with a larger area then the whole container is filled with fluid which is marked in green or oil you can see so let us consider force f1 is applied on this piston that is the smaller piston due to this a pressure p equal to f1 upon a1 as pressure is equal to force upon area so pressure p equal to f1 upon a1 will be applied on the fluid now according to the pascal's law the fluid will exert equal pressure on the container in all directions right so the pressure exerted by this piston will be equal to the pressure exerted by the fluid on this piston so p1 that is pressure at point 1 will be equal to pressure at point 2 due to the pascal's law thus p1 will be equal to p2 now substituting the formulas we will get f1 upon a1 because p1 is equal to f1 upon a1 so p1 that is f1 upon a1 will be equal to f2 upon a2 rearranging this equation we will get this this equation which states f2 is equal to a2 by a1 into f1 f2 is the force exerted by this piston force exerted by fluid on this piston so from this we can see as a2 is greater than a1 because a2 is the larger piston so as a2 is greater than a1 this ratio is greater than 1 thus f2 will be greater than f1 this multiplier the ratio greater than 1 is possible due to the pascal's law and the fluid properties now how is this concept traced to the automotive brakes let us consider here and see so f1 here shows the force exerted by the driver through the brake pedal hence f1 is the force exerted by the driver through the brake pedal there is a component in the braking system which acts like this piston and and transmits this pressure onto a hydraulic fluid so a2 is the piston which will apply the force on the wheel so this is how a basic automotive braking system works and eliminates all the disadvantages of earlier use systems how so basically as fluid is incompressible and exerts equal pressure in all directions the pressure exerted or the force exerted is very evenly distributed and also it is a very reliable system and as we saw getting multiplication through this system is very easy you just increase the area of this piston reduce the area of this piston and you will get increased force f2 at the output so this is how hydraulic brakes are very advantageous and have replaced all other ways of transmission now that we know the first two main parts of a braking system that is how the driver up applies the force and how this force is transmitted to the wheels let us understand the third main part of the system that is how this force is applied on the wheels to stop them so basically there is a surface that is attached to the wheel which is rotating with it and the brake pads are rubbed against that surface to make the wheel stop due to the friction considering this third part there are two main types of brakes first is the disc brake and second is the drum brake so let us understand the drum brake first in the drum brake there is a drum as the name suggests which is rigidly attached to the wheels and rotates with it inside the drum there are two semi cylindrical shaped braking pads the braking material or the friction lining is on the outer surface of these semi cylindrical pads these semi cylindrical pads are pivoted from the lower end so that they can move along the pivot and at the top end they have an actuator which pushes them outside so when brake is applied the actuator at the top of the pads pushes them outside hence the pads rotate about the pivot at their lower end and rub against the drum due to the friction between the drum and the semi cylindrical pads the brake is applied this is how the whole drum brake works another type of brake as we discussed is the disc brake in a disc brake there is a disc as the name suggests which is rigidly attached to the wheels and rotates with it and there is another component called as the caliper which is placed on the disc the caliper has a cavity in which the disc is placed on both sides of this cavity that is on both sides of this disc there are two brake pads and 
there are pistons behind the brake pads which push these brake pads against the disc and hence due to the friction between the brake pads and the disc the braking action takes place so this is precisely how hydraulic brakes work we will be discussing about disc brakes and drum brakes in individual videos in total depth thank you for watching this video i hope you have liked it and don't forget to like share subscribe and hit the bell icon see you soon and keep learning and keep teaching